Armor 3 is one of the best games on the market for the tactical military sandbox experience. After it came out in 2013, there has been numerous updates and DLC, with the latest one as late as last year. If you're new to Arma and you think it's hard to decide what DLC you should get, then sit back, relax, as I tell you what is worth it and what can wait. My name is Seb, and this is what Arma 3 DLC you should buy. Before we begin, you should know that Armor 3 DLC works a little bit different than other games. Let me explain. So, all official multiplayer game modes will work regardless if you purchase the DLC or not. But that only goes for official DLC and not Creator DLC or CDLC that is made by third party studios. You should also know that assets from official DLC packs can be used by anyone regardless of ownership. What you will find, however, is with the DLC assets you don't own, there will be a watermark screen. At first it will be subtle, but the more you use the item from the DLC, the watermark will intensify and block more of your screen. This is to remind you that you don't own the DLC, and therefore should consider buying it to remove the watermark. Ok, now let's begin with the highly recommended DLC. The official Apex DLC offers a full co-op campaign, a massive ton of new gears and weapons, a new tropical island named Tonoa that has multiple new factions, as well as the old man open world single player story campaign. The Apex DLC is almost mandatory as the expansion is so widespread and popular. This should be the first DLC you purchase after you get the main game and it will give you many many hours of content that you can enjoy. That's why the Apex DLC is first on the list. Next up is Sog Prairie Fire. There has been 4 creator DLC released for Armor Tree. The best of these 4 is without a doubt Sog Prairie Fire. The studio behind it, Savage Game Design, had it created with the help of real special forces MACV Sog veterans that served in Vietnam. It is full on the best Vietnam experience in almost any game on the market. It has a great multiplayer game mode with Mic Force has a ton of content like weapons, vehicles and gear, a big active player base and community, and it has regular updates. In general, it's just a lot of fun. It offers a campaign that is best played in co-op, it has a great soundscape, it even has a great soundtrack. It is without a doubt a highly recommended DLC that you should get. I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of roadside IEDs and goats in the way. That's what's made me what I am today. The Cards DLC, the official Armor Tree 2014 April Full Stroke. So many people wanted carding in Armor Tree after this video, so they added time trials and gave us the cards. It's more a certified meme in the Armor Culture and Community. To love cards DLC, so I can't but help to recommend it. Master the most splendid of splits. The Western Sahara CDLC by Rotators Collective. The latest of the CDLC is by far the most creative. It offers an open world single player and co-op experience with extraction as well as the game mode Alchemist where you get magical powers. It also unlocks a ton of PMC equipment and a beautiful but small map called Sephra Ramal. The CDLC offers you a couple of new factions, all of them with their own gear and equipment and so forth. And for mission makers it has a few new assets. It even has camels, drones and shields that you can deploy. Overall it's a lot of value for your purchase. We don't live in a world without conflict. We're not here to stop it. 
But we do have responsibilities. War does have rules. That's why we're here. Loss of War is by many considered to be the best single-player story experience in Armor 3. The campaign is educational as it's fun to play. The DLC teaches you about the Loss of War and how murky they can become in modern conflicts. The DLC offers a new faction with IDAP, which is short for the International Development and Aid Project. In terms of assets, it goes deeper into the mine clearing aspects of Arma and delivers new equipment like drones and mine dispensers. You'll find this DLC ranked high with many creators for the amazing story and the impact it had with its message. Most of the sales went directly to the ICRC after it launched. And Arma would continue to cooperate with ICRC a second time with the Art of War DLC, which is free for everyone. They could have the upper hand. To defeat them, you may have to take calculated risks. The Contact DLC is the weirdest one of all of the official Army DLC. Contact is more of an expansion pack with a new terrain called Livonia. It has a full single player campaign where you are in the midst of an alien invasion. It offers new factions like the LDF, Livonian Defense Force and Spetsnaz, as well as hundreds of new objects for mission makers to use in their custom scenarios. In general, there's a ton of contact to unpack itself and some interesting gameplay features that they made just for this DLC and expansion. I would recommend getting this DLC for the single player experience in itself and if you're interested in making missions. It's not the kind of DLC where you get to fight the aliens, it's more about the story of how you would interact if some alien entity came to Earth and it also explores the aspects of electronic warfare to some degree. Overall, an expansion worth checking out. Only super localized. Alright, so from this point going forward, the DLCs are not necessarily needed. They offer mostly assets like weapons, vehicles and equipment. They don't have much offerings in terms of single player content. And I would probably only get them on sale or if you're particularly interested in the theme itself. So I'm just gonna go through them quickly. Global Mobilization is the best of the DLC that I would probably wait with getting. It's a great DLC in terms of quality and the pure quantity of assets that you get. It even offers a map with summer and winter versions. It is lower ranked because the campaign for single player isn't very good or anything special. If you're very into Cold War history and in particular West and East Germany, I would recommend it. But otherwise I would wait with this purchase. The Tanks DLC offers the Altus Requiem mini campaign as well as new tanks, anti-tank launchers and equipment and gear. When the DLC originally came out it brought with it a lot of general improvements to the core game with 3D modeled interiors for the tanks and uh, TVT Vanguard game mode. However, the assets it offers makes me not really recommend getting this right away. The Marksman DLC offers a handful of sniper rifles and machine guns and equipment. When Marksman came out, it had really good core improvements like firing from vehicles and uh, weapon resting on bipods. But I wouldn't buy it today because it only offers you weapons and equipment so you can't really justify prioritizing buying this DLC. That's why it's ranked low on the list. However, assets in this DLC are widely popular on public servers so you will come across them on any of the official servers. The Jets DLC gives you new Jets and new asset. It's ranked lower because today it mainly offers very little and nothing really worthwhile in terms of multiplayer or single player content. But playing an Armor 3 you will come across flying, something you will end up doing. So if that's something you plan to do, I would get the DLC. Helicopters DLC offers new helicopters and like the Jets DLC it ranks lower for many of the same reasons. I still recommend getting the DLC if you're going to play a lot of multiplayer just because of the widespread use of the assets from the DLC on the many servers you will find out there. CSLA Iron Curtain is a creator DLC that offers a new map and a decent quantity of assets. And the big plus for this DLC is the terrain. 
named uh, Gabretta with forest, mountains and valleys. Other than that, the quality is a bit lower than the other DLC. And for that reason, it doesn't really segregate itself enough from the general mods that you can find on the Steam Workshop. Molten 2045 is a remake of an old terrain into Armor 3 standards. It offers combat ops, co-op, multiplayer game mode that has random infantry missions. But that's it in terms of content, therefore I can't really recommend getting this unless it's a sale. And lastly, the Tac Ops DLC is just a mission pack. There are good missions, but it is really not necessary to get this DLC. And there you have it. I hope it helped you make a better decision on what DLC you want to get for Armor 3. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video if you like this content. Would also like to point out the option to become a member. Check out the members tab and video down below. And that's all from me. From me to you, stay safe.